yeah, there's a handgun pointed to my face. And they're, they had showed me earlier, there's a baseball bat every corner of the room. So here I am. There's missing drugs. I'm held at gunpoint. I've put myself into this position. And the only thing that's going to get me out of this is... Welcome to You Belong, the podcast where stories come to life, hosted by Pastor Nate. In each episode, we dive into deep, powerful testimonies and moving stories that reveal the incredible ways God is at work in our lives. Remember, everyone has a story, and every story matters to God. So whether you're searching for hope, inspiration, or simply a reminder that you're not alone, let us journey together and discover the stories that unite us all. This is You Belong. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Nate here, and I have my friend Matt Hallahan. Matt is the Worship and Creative Arts Director at The Point Church, and he has a story. And as we know, every story matters to God, and it matters to us too. So Matt, tell us where you came from, and where did you go? Straight out of Renews. There you go. <laughs> Moved all the way to the big city of the Miramichi. The fourth largest city in New Brunswick. <laughs> well, I didn't even know that, so uh, I, I'm glad that I came here. At least I could, we learned something there new. There we go. <laughs> well, uh, it definitely started uh, in Renews for sure, about uh, 1984, but I won't bore you with all the details <laughs> in between. But uh, grew up, uh, mom and dad had split up when I was 10, um, affected me, affected mm-hmm. me in, in a very big way. And, uh, you know, God makes all things together for good. And he mm-hmm. definitely has shown that to me mm-hmm. over these, uh, over these years. And I, I, I appreciate the people that I've been brought up with the church family. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been involved in church. I started as, a, as, as a Catholic in, in the church renews and was, very much in touch with with God mm-hmm. through the Catholic Church, mm-hmm. felt felt God's presence in my life even as a small kid, and mm-hmm. and there's been people that have spoken to my life even uh, through through the Catholic Church. Like a bishop came up to me during confirmation classes and was like, like, and he never did this about anybody, but he's like, he felt something about me, like I had a calling, and was like, That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So this bishop actually says, uh, "Have you ever thought about joining uh, and becoming a priest?" And then I was like, in the like, Maybe, you know, like, and then it's like, I kind of wanted a wife, so like, <laughs> they, they, this isn't going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I even had a crush maybe back then, so I was like, oh, no, this Cancel is going to work out. out. But I'm, I'm thankful to have that and thankful to have youth group because uh, my teenage years is where it kind of fell off the rails for me. And I would say, like, kind of started maybe 13, 14, like, to the rebellious stage, maybe because of my parents breaking up and new relationships with my parents and and Mm -hmm. kind of I would run back and forth like from moms to dads to to my grandmothers and then I just kind of ran into the wrong crowd and there's something that can really if there's something that you really take away uh from this story I hope that it's like there is redemption Mm -hmm. and that uh there is uh, a real struggle with hanging around with the wrong the wrong people and it can really put you into wrong places wrong positions you might not do something you, you might be in the best of heart you're a friendly person you think these people are your friends and then it push comes to shove when you're on the other side of things you know like is anybody really your friend like i know i have friendship and i know i have that positive relationship in church Mm -hmm. and and i was glad for that but i I really seen the other side of it when i was a teenager i rebelled then i I took to drugs i took to alcohol um i've done like some psychedelics and stuff and marijuana and drinking and then that led me to be a part of people that are just not good for me like Mm -hmm. totally not the church crowd and Mm -hmm. and it kind of went under the guise of friendship. Like I kind of thought everything was, Hey, I'm not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm not joining a gang here, Mm -hmm. but I ended up at a gang clubhouse. Like, and, uh, rascals and little rascals, (laughs) like (laughs) a little bit different than the little rascals, a little bit more dangerous, uh, weapon related. Uh, It it was definitely uh, an experience and it was a very eye opening experience for me. It was one of the things that have changed me, uh, for the better. And to really see, kind of you are who you associate with mm-hmm. you know like regardless of how good you are if you associate with something you know like and, and you're down into that 
you're working your way into that section down that path you know bad things come to you at least it's like a law of attraction you know like if i'm thinking about god Mm -hmm. if i'm putting myself into the word all the time Mm -hmm. my spirit's there Mm -hmm. well if i'm not Mm -hmm. if i'm doing all the wrong things Mm -hmm. and i'm feeding that Mm -hmm. part of my life well that grows and then Mm -hmm. i've seen that grow rather quickly especially in my friends lives uh and it, it made me rebel from that and come back to god eventually and the major story for me was i i remember like being at a clubhouse and this was like a teenage gang that was associated with the hell's angels so like Stop the it. guy's dad oh the guy's dad was like in the hell's angels i don't know how high up he was uh and you know these these people are they're people like you and i like they can be very nice they can be very friendly but there's a danger that's associated with that, as I as I mentioned before, and uh, that'll come to light here. And I was hanging out with the clubhouse. Like, if you wanted something for a snack or a treat, they had it there. It could be a, hey, I'm craving a Big Daddy cookie from uh, the Irving. Cookie. Well, th- there's a box that they probably stole from some store <laughs> somewhere and then has them. The whole basement was full of products like that and, like, free cigarettes, free oh. drugs, free okay. alcohol. Everything's mm-hmm. given it to you. It's a huge party. Mm-hmm. And and it was a lot of fun until all of a sudden I look over in the corner and I see my friend dangling from his neck. The guy that collects the drug money has him by the throat with one hand. Come He's a big on. guy and his, his feet are dangling. So I had to run over there. I grab the guy. I throw him over my hip. He's down on the ground. And then I'm, I'm, it's me versus a clubhouse at this point. There was like me and another friend there. So there's just so, two of you guys. There's just the two of us. Actually, there was three of us, and the other guy was like, he barely spoke to anybody because okay. he, he, in any environment. So, like, uh, we were on our own, you know, like, totally on our own. And looking back, I can see how God really did protect me, you know, even through that because he had a plan for me mm-hmm. in, in yeah. my life and yeah. in, in ministry. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do at that point, but I just said, hey, you know, like, what's going on here? I kind of, he got get up and we were kind of starting to square off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Never was one to fight in the street, really. Uh, got into a couple of hockey scraps maybe <laughs> over the careers and, oh, yeah. and on the playground when I was a little kid. But, uh, uh, but not in like a clubhouse. Not at a clubhouse, yeah. Okay. Not like uh, roadhouse style, yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> not like Dalton, uh, yeah, nothing yes. like that. Yeah. So I was kind of very concerned. So I said, hold on, yeah, what's going on here? Um, what did my friend do, first of all? Like, you know, like... If he's got, if he did anything to harm you in a major way, like I'll be the first to, you know, scold him myself, jump, yeah, jump yeah. him myself <laughs> here. Don't, if he's going to put me in this amount of yeah, danger. Yeah. And uh, so he said, no, there's a bunch of drugs that have gone missing. And like there was drugs, like a lot of drugs, like a room full of drugs. Something that you couldn't just take either. Like you couldn't, I'm just like, how would you think we took a movie? How would you think we took all this stuff? Yeah. Like we never left the house and they're like, you were the last per- people with it. And, you know, the guy that was hosting the party that was kind of the leader was kind of showing off and showing us, hey, look at all these drugs, that you, you know, like, you know, would you like some? And like, it's just like, and, and may, try to make it look very cool and inviting. How old's that guy that would be he doing was, He was actually the same age as me. That's yeah. wild. So like yeah. 16, 17 yeah. years old? Yeah. Never did drugs himself, but... Uh, <laughs> Push them, <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness, yeah. Push them, push what them, on re- earth? push them uh, okay. pretty hard on everybody else. But uh, uh, just, just one of those things. I, I ended up uh, at his house, and mm-hmm. now I'm staring at uh, this gang, and they're all looking at me, and one's pointing a gun directly pointing at me. Pointing a gun at you? Yeah, there's a handgun pointed to my face. And they're, they had showed me earlier. There's a baseball bat every corner of the room. So here I am. There's missing drugs. I'm held at gunpoint. And there could have been, you know, like, there's probably more guns even than that. I just, it's all they needed. I had nothing on me. They searched me. They brought me over to the, the elder's house, you know, the, the guy's dad who's in the Hells Angels. Thankfully, uh, maybe a divine intervention thing, he vouched for me. said, no. This is your friend's dad? Friend's dad friend's that's dad, in the Hells okay. Angels, yeah. The the guy that was doing the leading of, in the club. And he said, no, nope, those guys from Miramichi there, they're stand-up guys. They're not going to do something stupid like this. They are not that dumb. Okay. <laughs> and we'll find it, take them back to the house and hold them there. I don't know how long I went back to the house. And it was like, seemed like an eternity yeah. of waiting. Just yeah. like, you know, what's going to happen to me? Mm-hmm. I'm Like, these are all the thoughts that are going through my head. Like, am I just going to be shot? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm still, like, I'm still being held at gunpoint at, like, 
it's back in his waistband, but I can't run off. I yeah. can't even run away. Like yeah. I can't run away from this issue. I've put myself into this position and the only thing and uh is is this going to get me out of this is is divine intervention or they find these drugs which would be like divine intervention yeah, i don't be. know yeah. like you know for yeah. me maybe yeah. um uh so it's just kind of those things like you know like am i um, am i alone here in this mm-hmm. like i felt i felt so alone mm-hmm. and uh so i i didn't know where to where i was going to turn with this and then all of a sudden they come back to the house and like we found it we found it you can let them you go. had it didn't you it, I didn't did. have it. So hold on. Plot <laughs> twist. You had the drugs. Yeah. I, I can honestly say I never took the drugs. <laughs> I, okay. I never, uh, just something that none of us, I knew my friend wouldn't either. It's mm-hmm. just, like, there wasn't a doubt in my mind that we didn't. Like, mm-hmm. the, the amount of drugs that went missing. And what had happened was a bit of jealousy had taken place. The guy's uh, girlfriend had taken the drugs because he was talking to another girl, threw them in behind those. You might remember them from the early days, big the tube, big old tube, big tube, yeah, tube big, yes. <laughs> well, the big yeah. TV stands. Yeah. They threw them all in behind, uh, in behind the TV stand. And so, like your life and everyone else's life was because of jealous girlfriend. Jealous girlfriend could have could have got killed because I was in the wrong place, at the wrong time, at the wrong time, and that can happen. Yeah. to anybody yeah. it just that road leads to a very dark place you can have the best intentions you could be like hey you know i'm not going to do this i'm not going to be involved yeah. in this you know yeah. what it might find you like you know like yeah. you're walking in to satan's dominion yeah. you know like it's it, it's it's pretty difficult to not come out unharmed mm-hmm. uh if you're mm-hmm. if you're in that set of mind that i was when i was a teenager too like with rebelling, with yeah. not finding who I was, mm-hmm. but I had that in God, and I felt that through church. But I, I felt like my family life, as loving as my mom was, as loving as my dad was, as loving as my grandparents were, I just kept shifting back and forth because it was I was hurt, and then I was in I was hurting my family, yeah. and I was hurting myself. Mm-hmm. I was no help to my friends really, and. Uh, it kind of pulled me into that, and there's just been so much that had come from that, and it was a short time in my life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe three to four years, like that little bit of a rebellious stage, mm-hmm. and uh, I, thankfully, my mom had sent me away. She's like, mm-hmm. you know what, you're getting out of this. Mm-hmm. Like she had seen what's going on, like, mm-hmm. and said, you know what, you need to, you need to escape. I'm gonna send you to your uncle's. You can work with him for the summer. Where was he at? He was in uh, Red Deer, Alberta. Red Deer, yeah. a little bit away. Yeah. A little away. So I went there so, and worked for Shunda Construction okay. for the yeah. summer. And uh, I just found a girlfriend, too. So it was kind of okay. hard. I was okay. I was still Shoot. kind of in love. and, and <laughs> <A classic. laughs> Yeah, into that way. Yeah. But, but I made it through and I came back. And, uh, and that gave me a bit of a break. There was no drugs there. Mm-hmm. Um, there was no alcohol, mm-hmm. really. My uncle would have a drink on the weekend there. We worked... Mm-hmm. worked every day and then we worked mo- a lot of Saturdays too so there wasn't much okay. time we just worked and spent time together and and I was able to escape it and when I came back one of the the first time running into one of my best friends I've seen him across coming across the bridge coming across the, the bridge in uh, Blackfield that's at the bottom of the Canes River Hill mm-hmm. going towards the rapids and uh, his clothes were wet and he's walking across the bridge something didn't add up I just felt like something wrong in my spirit and walks over to the bridge and I pull over, like he's standing there looking like he just looked like a shell of himself. Like just his eyes were like glossed over, like almost like something had taken and just sucked the life out of him. Or, you know, if he was just, he's in this huge daze and uh, spiritually probably too. And uh, so I just kind of felt like we pulled over and then I tried to talk to him. He jumps over the side of the bridge and uh, people do jump over the side of that bridge, you know, like they have. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen it in like my age, like nobody had ever done it then. I'm I'm assuming the water level was higher when that used to happen. Like when I looked down, he was only up to his knees in water and it's a decent fall there. Like for people that know, like he wasn't that long, far from the shore where he jumped. He was only water up to his knees, but God mm-hmm. was protecting him. I believe like mm-hmm. he did it twice and I, I couldn't stand around and watch it anymore. I went home and, and told his family that I was concerned about him and, mm-hmm. and he got help too. And, and okay. he, we're, we're, we, all of our friends, like we kind of went through, we, we were in the youth group and we, we never let that falter too. So mm-hmm. he was able to commit of it too, uh, with, with God's help. 
uh, with the church's help, uh, with us going through the same thing and being able to hang out together still Mm -hmm. and not be involved in that and let Mm -hmm. that roll down that path again. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's... I, I've had friends too that because they went down that road, they were in the they ended up in the in the in the psychiatric unit for months and months and months. Okay. Didn't know who they were. Um, let, talking to people that are not there, like that could have very well been me. Mm-hmm. Like I was saved from that. Like mm-hmm. through God's grace, I believe like God had a plan for me because mm-hmm. it was it was definitely. Mm-hmm something that made me who I am today. Do I wish that never happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I I do. But I'm on the other side and I'm looking at it now and thinking like Mm -hmm. God really showed up in my life. He was able to pull me out of that pit, like, Mm -hmm. like quite literally a pit. Mm -hmm. Like at times I didn't even know who I was myself, like didn't know who I wasn't. So I was at that point with my friends were Mm -hmm. just like psychiatric unit, jumping off the bridge like i i was probably close to there and then i got pulled out and went to alberta and came back and and then seen how much it changed in just a sh- few short months of my friends so mm-hmm. it'd be like wow i could have really and that I, I went back to church and uh, slowly started to get away from that altogether. ended up going to college and met a woman mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and uh had to grow up really fast because i had my first child when i was 20 years old so that's young it was like super young so i just remember thinking like i don't want my kids to be involved in like this thing that i just pretty much came out of yeah because you're not much older i'm not really totally i'm only 19 like yeah yeah. i had i had by 18 years old i was i was you know starting to come around then Mm -hmm. and uh not be involved in that type of situations mm-hmm. and get more involved in youth group, get more involved in things that are going on in the church mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and volunteering. And then, mm-hmm. so I uh, just find myself and then all of a sudden I'm a 21 year old with two kids okay. and then I'm alone. Okay. I, uh, my wife at the time had cheated, left, never coming back, mm-hmm. said, I just don't want anything to do with me and with mm-hmm. the, with, she said she wanted something to do with the kids, never, ever really. So here I am at 21 years old, and I am... And the boys are two and under, basically, at that point? or At that point, yeah. Yeah, they would have been, like, th- three and two. Like, three and two. Okay. Yeah, like, there's about a year and a half in between them, like... And you're doing that for a couple of, couple of years, two, three years? For a few, for, three, for a few years. years, yeah. And it okay. took me a lot of finding myself... Uh, Cause that was a lot of heartbreak, you know, yeah. like I, I had forgiven her, like, and I had tried so hard to get her back, even though I said, you know, if God can forgive me, then I, I, I yeah, surely yeah, can forgive yeah, her, yeah. you know, like, yeah. um, mistakes happen, mm-hmm. things happen. I never wanted to have my kids be a part of a broken home, growing up from a broken home and having that kind of feel like that contributed to my teenage yeah, wasteland, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah. That's kind of uh, something that I that was just like I never want that to happen to my kids and I and when it happened it was it really destroyed me I felt mm-hmm. bad for the children mm-hmm. I felt bad for me mm-hmm. and to be honest I felt bad for my spouse because I know I I didn't want her to come down the road either thinking you know like all these years go by I didn't have a relationship with my kids and mm-hmm. I wanted my kids to have that relationship mm-hmm. I was like I never want to be a weekend parent mm-hmm. I was doing the full parenting <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just one of those things that I just never wanted to happen. It, it happened and I'm alone now with, with kids and you know, what does that look like? And mm-hmm. I get thinking, God, you know, like I was involved in ministry too at this time. Like I'm working at the radio station, uh, okay. life radio, That's tw- right, yeah, life radio did that for 12 station. years. Like I, I was doing that ministry. I was, I wasn't involved in, in, in music as much like, uh, at that time, you know, I was literally just, just involved the into the radio. The yeah, the voice of the, the mayor machines. <laughs> <laughs> Hoppy Dunn would call himself the yeah, old buddy there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I just felt like, you know, what's next for me? What's next for the kids? So I was like, the the biggest thing that I can control is myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to feed myself with everything that I can take in from the Bible. I mm-hmm. watched hours and hours and hours of right now media stuff. Mm-hmm. I've read books. 
I strategically, because I was part of the, the radio station, would interview people that would help out my life. Mm-hmm. And then I knew if it, I was thinking, <laughs> if, if it can help me, it's, yeah. it's got to help somebody else. Yeah. So yeah. I literally used that opportunity one time. I got a book and it said, you, uh, you should call this guy. And it was about better dads. It was what it was called. It was a book by Scott Anderson. Mm-hmm. And I said, I just felt like God telling me to call him. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to try to get a hold of this guy. It's probably not going to work, but hey, I've interviewed people that I never thought I'd ever interview. You know, like mm-hmm. I've asked questions to Stephen Harper. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> never thought that that, oh, cool. that would even yeah. be a thing. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. so you know what? God's big. Maybe he'll make something happen out of it. And I sent him an email, get an email back. Yeah, when would you like to connect? And sure. And I get talking to him and we, we talk about being dads, like, because I was using that to help help me get along and, mm-hmm. and to help my kids go through a very difficult time mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And I interviewed him, and after the end of the interview, we talked about family stuff. I said, Scott, I just like, do you have a minute? Like, do you have a moment? I, can I talk to you personally, like about something that I'm going through? And he's like, I got all the time. He was a pastor. Mm-hmm. He he. This, uh, on, this is on the interview. This is off off the record. Off the record. Off the record. Off the record. record. Yeah. yeah. I said, uh, I need I need some help. Like. It's like, I feel like God wants me to forgive my wife. And I feel like it's meant, like, if I show her as much love, if I show her God's love through me, that she'll come back. And then he said, that could very well happen, but that might not. Might not. Mm-hmm. And he said, the best voice that I can give you is no matter what, he's like, is that it's like, it's like riding a bicycle. It's like, if you're pedaling your bike, you can steer your bike. But mm-hmm. if... So if you're pedaling for God, mm-hmm. God can just turn you. He can move you to where you need to go. Mm-hmm. You're pedaling for him. You'll see those opportunities. You'll mm-hmm. know where to go. You'll, you'll be able to turn, but you can't turn a bike that isn't moving. Mm-hmm. So then that really lit a fire up underneath me. That was one of the things that changed my life in, in, a, in a big way. I haven't heard that said to me before. Oh, that's cool. And I was like, I'm on the right path. I'm going to start pedaling. And regardless of what happens, I'm going to make my life as best as it can be. I'm going to make my children's lives. I'm going to be the best dad I can be. I don't have somebody in my life right now, but I'm going to prepare myself that if she comes back, if somebody else comes into my life, I'm the best person that I can be Mm -hmm. by pedaling that pedaling that spiritual bike so that God can, Mm -hmm. can direct me to where to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I just, started taking things in again now i'm starting to dig into the marriage side of things and like i don't even have a wife like mm-hmm. god why you want me to yeah, do yeah. this type of yeah. thing but uh i just kind of stuck with the plan and uh to what scott said to what i felt god was leading me through i come on to uh church uh one evening and then uh i'm gonna say darwin's name i know darwin would be <laughs> i gotta give darwin a shout out darwin comes to church uh with us here at the point he rocks the coffee and, industry, he, him and, and he makes great coffee hey, <laughs> I, I just show up he just he just hands it right to me i don't even have to ask me the best knows barista. the order now oh, a little yeah, bit of know. cream and then he's like he knows exactly yeah, yeah, when like yeah, so it's good. awesome uh i've known darwin for a long time i have a lot of respect for darwin and, and bonnie darwin said this to me he said you know i prayed exactly for what i wanted my wife to be and god he delivered it like to the t he said i wrote it down he said he he said like i wrote it down and even on a piece of paper and kept praying over this piece of paper i was even doing that and and he said when i met my wife bonnie check 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 down to the hair color and everything (laughs) and i said that's amazing you know like i was like hey it's worth a shot so Mm -hmm. i was like god just if you have it in your heart, <laughs> <laughs> it's in your will. Yeah. I need a blonde haired, blue eyed nurse. And uh, somebody told me that a ner- uh, if you married a nurse, it'd be great. You could stay home and uh, you could do all the cleaning and cooking and providing and they could make the great money. I know. I don't know if that was your plan. <laughs> Mine's <laughs> basically the same thing. Yeah, same thing. She's it supposed to be a doctor. Out. So she yeah. is an RT. So it's almost the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much there, right? <laughs> But it kind of backfired on me. She still made me go to work. <laughs> what a scam. Yeah. <laughs> so I so you met her. Yeah. She, Blonde haired, blue eyed yeah. nurse that's good with kids. And I want to meet her in church. Okay. That was important. I didn't okay. want to be unequally yoked. Yeah. I was unequally yoked in my first relationship. Mm-hmm. And as I grew in God, uh, and as I grew in my character, because mm-hmm. the, my kids really smartened me up. Yeah. Um, too, yeah. Like, you know, anything that was kind of lingering from those teenage years, as soon as my kids were born, it was gone. Mm-hmm. Like, gone. Never mm-hmm. to be seen again. Mm-hmm. And I think that, uh, 
I think that that point, I wanted to meet somebody that just was totally mm -hmm. all in for faith. Mm -hmm. So with that, I said, God, I want to meet her in church. Mm -hmm. And I looked around at the congregation that Sunday, and I was like, whew, mm -hmm. like, a lot, of, a lot of grannies. <laughs> <laughs> not my, yeah, not, not my, on my list. Yeah. It's like, I, I like playing bingo <laughs> or doing something like them, but maybe some, some crib in the evenings, but maybe not every day. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was thinking uh, maybe I'm going to have to take it in an alpha meeting or somewhere. Maybe I'm going to have to go to a different churches and, and experience different things and maybe get some babysitters and get outside of the church a little mm -hmm. bit more and still be able to, you know, Meet but, somebody, yeah. and I didn't, I didn't, I got, it's just like, because <laughs> not much time it went by and actually God had answered my prayer. He like, in a big way, I, I, I rolled into church one morning and, uh, what Melissa, are you going to at this point? This was the fellowship center and in okay. Blackville, uh, and, and Darwin was going there too. Darwin was going oh, there yeah, at the that's time. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he was, he was there and, uh, we had, uh, some good counsel there. That's for sure. And I said, Walked into this building, I just all of a sudden I see this girl there, mutual with a friend, and start talking to her. Yeah, I know what do you do? I'm a is nurse. She's from that area. Where's, yeah, where's, like is she from there? The she's, girl, the blonde girl. No, no, okay. she's not from there at all. Oh. Sorry, uh, she's actually from Saskatchewan. Okay, okay. So like she ends <laughs> That's up so random. Yeah, it's yeah. just like it's you know, like girl here's a girl from Saskatchewan yeah. in the church, and it's like okay, you know, like uh, I, I so I pulled up a chair, you know. I'll, Maddie there and uh, introduced myself to her because I usually like to introduce myself to new people that were coming to the church mm -hmm. anyway. And then she was there from a mutual friend who she met, who was a close friend of mine, Melissa, who now comes to church here at the Point Church, Melissa LeBlanc. Oh, come on. Okay. Very cool, very <laughs> so cool. like Melissa and I, we we were friends like that. She's helped me get through those teenage years like mm -hmm. you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. Like just it's she was she was actually involved in the youth group too at the time mm -hmm. so she was one of the leaders at one point okay. helping out so uh here she is with melissa they went on a missions trip together so they were friends okay. and then melissa introduced me a couple like but probably a year or more goes by and uh we start talking actually and like you know like i, I wasn't quite ready at that time mm -hmm. like i'm still pouring into myself mm -hmm. i'm still trying to straighten out the bill situation that i got left with mm -hmm. with uh, the the, the mm -hmm. previous relationship like mm -hmm. It was a struggle. So uh, all of a sudden, like, she visits again mm -hmm. and visits again the third mm -hmm. time. And I, I was, mm -hmm. I uh, actually asked her out and uh, we went to the first date was a Mercy Me concert in Phil Wickham. So yeah. there you go. There <laughs> She's you like, go. Uh, do you join in and stuff with the claps and all this stuff? I was like, totally not a joiner. <laughs> and I was there just, just praising them. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're arms wide open clap. Good job. I didn't embarrass her, I don't think. Like, I, I don't know, but uh, I don't think she was expecting me to be such a joiner, yeah. but I was filled with spirit that day. And yeah. man, and has God ever touched my life? Like, so like I, I look back on it now, like, from where I could have end up, like mm -hmm. which would be everybody, with the exception of my friends that that were in youth group, like some of them are passed on, some of them are, mm -hmm. some of them are not with us anymore, some of them are in bad shape, some mm -hmm. of them are walking the streets right now, homeless. Yeah, I I could have very well been yeah, in that bucket. Ones, like yeah. it, I was, I was involved into that group, mm -hmm. into that area, but I believe that God pulled me out of it, mm -hmm. and. He had a guiding. He had a plan for me mm. the whole time, the whole time, and I didn't know. I didn't know I'd be working in ministry. Like mm. I didn't know I'd be part of the radio mm. station. Mm. Like all these things were like. I went to college. I went to college to be a carpenter. Like I was mm. like, well, you know, Joseph okay. was a carpenter. My Jesus was a carpenter. Thing. Like you know, maybe there's yeah. something to this carpentry yeah. thing. I like working with my yeah. hands. Maybe I worked for like a year and a half in that, and then all of a sudden, like you know, a church comes out and is like, hey, you know, like you sing a little bit at church, like. Mm. I never played an instrument even at that time. Okay. Like, um, and uh, I said, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to help you out. And so it was a hiring program to go and help and teach kids about drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I got to learn a little bit more about mm -hmm. singing and playing mm -hmm. a little bit of drums and mm -hmm. putting on skits for kids and even uh, all over the province. So like, like Miramichi to Fredericton to like oh, okay, St. John cool. to Rexton, like we did a lot, all the, all the schools and talk to them about uh, drugs and okay. alcohol abuse and, and other okay. things as well and and, uh, and and abuse itself mm -hmm. and and uh, so it all just kind of mm -hmm. stem from just being faithful to God. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I uh, really 
God brought me through all the stuff from the teenage years. And as hard as it was, I grew a lot in a very, very short period of time. And I don't know where I'd be without it. Mm-hmm. I would probably not be here as, as a lot of the guys that mm-hmm. I hung out with during that stage. They're not here anymore. Like they've passed on mm-hmm. there. There's some people I've actually met on the streets, even here in Miramichi. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I could have very well, well been in that, but mm-hmm. God reached in and pulled me out. Mm-hmm. You know, a guy from Renews goes from, you know, maybe down that life to mm-hmm. one of one day talking to, members of the casting crowns me mm. hanging out backstage with the newsboys to so like fun, being in nashville yeah. like so many tremendous opportunities with 12 years of radio mm. through music ministry and mm. now uh, a part of the point church yeah. which i can't be more excited about yeah, very just, if you can see the smile like <laughs> i'm very, he's got a smile if you I'm, can't see I'm it. excited about yeah. it. it it's <laughs> it's so cool to to hear your your story matt and like that's just a small aspect of your story. We could sit here for hours and hours and hours, but like it is so exciting for me just to be able to sit here across from you and hear a little bit about your story, about how God met you in those really deep, dark places and how he pulled you out of them multiple times, right? Divine intervention, whatever it might be, um, because he has a plan for you, right? And it's cool to see all these different aspects, you know, through um, dealing with all the gangs in the past, dealing with a you know a messy divorce, the two great boys. Now you've met this wonderful nurse who you've got two great kids with them, and you're seeing them grow in their faith too. And the radio station to now you're you know, there's a little bit of the car dealership, and and I guess you did stuff in the real you did stuff everywhere. I, <laughs> and, and, and now and now you're you're here, man. And that that's such an important aspect of your of your story, and it brought you to where you're at currently. But you're still here. So what is the next? chapter of your story like what, what's happening like did, i maybe you just started this ne- next chapter but where do you see your story going from now my story now is honestly uh, you know to be the best person that i can be you know who can i reach to be aware to be present not to be distracted by the things of the world but to be engaged by mm-hmm. things of what's going on and and what better place than the point church mm-hmm. like we're we're always innovating we're always moving and and be in the feet, be in the hands. Mm-hmm. And I, that's what I want to be. And I want to take music and I want to not only bless Miramichi, I want to bless the world with it. Maybe mm-hmm. somebody that's listening mm-hmm. online with the live stream. Mm-hmm. I want to build teams. I, mm-hmm. I, I really want to be uh, focused on what God's doing in in the church, in the music ministry, and and just be open to walk through that door mm-hmm. that what he, what he has opened for me. And, uh, that, that's where I found myself right here. And, uh, and I feel like I'm home. So, so uh, I'm here. <laughs> awesome. Man. Well, listen, man, thank you so much for sitting down, having this conversation with me and reminding all of us that your story matters to God. Thanks, Nate. <laughs>